Metahumans in Unreal Engine are incredibly realistic, and they look fantastic in cinematic sequences. But how do we turn a metahuman into an AI character or a player controlled character so that we can use it in our game and take full advantage of all the customizations the creator gives us in terms of appearance, clothing, and so on? There are a number of steps to accomplish this, and there are some pitfalls along the way. But by the end, we should have a player character that we can fully control with foot IK and AI characters that can chase us and can play montages, just as you would expect with any other character in your game. In this video, we will go through the simple steps to achieve this. So I've created a default third person game project. In Unreal, the way that you get access to metahumans is via Quixel Bridge. So make sure that in your launcher, the Quixel Bridge has been installed to the engine. The metahuman plugin should be installed by default, and this is Unreal 5.5.4. But if you go to your plugins and just type in metahuman, this is the plugin that we will require, and it should be active by default. The way that you access Quixel Bridge is by clicking here to the Quickly Add, and there should be a Quixel Bridge available. Click on that, and it should open your Quixel Bridge. And just make sure that you have signed in. Then on the left, you should have a menu item for MetaHumans. And that will open the MetaHumans that have been created by Epic, which you can download for your projects. If you create your own MetaHumans, they will appear under the My MetaHuman tab. For you to download. And once you click on a particular metahuman, and I'm going to choose this KG character here, you have the option to start the metahuman creator. And this will open the web browser where you can start to modify and customize your metahuman. We won't go into this today, but I would recommend that you explore all the options available as you can change almost anything in the appearance and even the body proportions and clothes that are being worn to create your own unique metahuman. Any metahumans that you create will automatically appear under your My Metahumans tab for you to download. But what we're going to do is we're going to choose this KG pre-created metahuman. If you click on download, and then you can press add to add it to your project. Once you've done that, you should have a MetaHumans folder in your content browser. There will be a common folder, which will apply to all MetaHumans you download. And then there will be one for your specific character. If you click on that, again, there'll be multiple folders, but Unreal gives you a pre-built blueprint of an actor type for your MetaHuman. So you can double click that. When you do that, you will probably get a message asking you to enable missing plugins and then to restart the engine. So follow those instructions. You can then open your BPKG again. And in the viewport, you should be able to see your MetaHuman character that you have downloaded. Now you'll notice that this parent class is actor. And in order for us to turn it into an AI or a player, we need to turn it into a character class. And there are different ways of doing this. So you could just copy all of the different meshes, body, feet, legs, torso, etc., and everything else, and then copy the functions that you require. But there's a simpler way of doing it. So if we go back to our content browser, and if we duplicate the blueprint that was given to us, and maybe just call this EP AI KG, and open that. A lot of these functions that come with the blueprint are not necessary for our requirements as they are to do with live retargeting and AR kit. So we can start off by deleting what we don't need. The first thing to do is to go to the construction script. And in essence, we only need to have these functions up to the enable master pose. Everything after that we can select and delete. We can compile that again. Then we can go back to our event graph. And in our event graph, you notice that we've got a lot of functions available here and some events. 
And essentially we don't need anything. So we can just get rid of this. We can get rid of this. And in terms of the functions, we only need the construction script and the enable master pose. So everything underneath it, we can start deleting. So the only function that we're keeping is the enable master pose function, which we will require. The next step is to go to the class settings. And here we can change it from an actor to a character. So you can choose the parent character or any subclass, but we'll just use character to begin with. And that should automatically reparent it. What we then need to do as the appearance will change is we need to parent the body to the character mesh. So we grab the body and drag it where it says drop here to attach to body mesh and we attach it. We can then delete the root as that is not needed and compile. Sometimes the skeletal mesh asset, when you click on one of the meshes that come with the metahumans, suggests that there is none there, even though you can clearly see that there is a skeletal mesh asset. You can ignore this, or you can either reopen the blueprint, restart the project if you want to, so that it shows up. The reason why we parent the body of the metahuman to the normal mesh that comes with a character is the way that the animation blueprint and the retargeting works. So if we go back to our content browser and go to the common folder for the metahumans and open that and then go to the animation and then click on the retargeting, we will see that there is an animation blueprint that comes with the metahuman. And one of these will come with each metahuman that you download. And it's a simple blueprint. So once you open it, you notice that the event graph is empty. If you click on the animation graph, all it has is this node, retarget pose from mesh. So it gets a source mesh component, and then it retargets in real time to provide an output pose. When you click on this retarget pose from mesh node, you notice in its settings, it tells us that it will use the attached parent. So that would be the character mesh. And then it has a retargeter asset, which is provided to us. And there are profiles that you can change. But generally, all of this can be left as it is. And the class settings and the class defaults are the default values, as we would expect. I will rename this blueprint so that we can identify it more clearly to ABPKG MetaHuman. So if we go back to our MetaHuman that we've turned into a character, what we now need to do is to give a mesh, a skeletal mesh asset. And the asset that we will use is either Manny or Quinn. So if I put in Quinn, that will then add Quinn as the skeletal asset. We can then reposition and rotate it. So minus 90 and minus 90. We can also give Quinn the correct animation blueprint, which will be ABP Manny or Quinn. I'll just choose Manny and compile. So Quinn will be the parent mesh, and that will be the source skeletal asset. But we don't want Quinn to be visible. So two things we need to change. One, if we type invisible, we can make invisible. Two, if we go to the optimization category, which is right at the bottom, we need to change this value. So visibility based tick option, change it from the default always tick pose to always tick pose and refresh bones. So it will always update the animation even though it is not visible. And then we can compile now we need to go to the metahuman body and find its animation blueprint. So under animation, we can now look for ABP KG meta and compile and save. So now we can is coming through as an idle animation as we would expect. But the first thing you notice is that there are some issues, and this is one of the problems that you might come across. The issue here is that the hair is being stretched, and this is a common problem. 
So the first thing we'll do is we'll actually go to the hair. So under face, there is hair. And then in the details panel, we'll look for the groom asset. And we can just double click on that. Then we can go to the interpolation and turn off RBF interpolation. Save that. So that might fix some of the problems. So some of that stretching is now gone. However, you still notice that there are more artifacts going on. The other issue can sometimes be to do with the LODs. So go to the LOD sync component and under LOD forced, either set this to zero or one. I'll choose one. That will fix some issues. Some artifacts with metahumans can just be solved by restarting. But there's also another issue here, and that is to do with the, the hair with the eyebrows or the eyelashes. And if you're getting other issues with things being stretched, if you click on the actual problem where you think it's coming from, so it's either the eyelash or the eyebrows here. I think it's the eyebrows seem to be stretched. Go to the details, and then under the option hair length scale, Sometimes reducing this either to a small scale or to zero can solve some problems. But otherwise, hopefully our metahuman looks reasonably okay. And if we go back to our editor and just drag the metahuman into the world and we play, he seems to look okay. and he has an animation, which is just the idle animation. So now if we want to turn him into an AI character, we just need to make one or two extra changes. The first thing we need to do is just add a nav mesh. To add that to our world, make it big enough and save everything. Then go back to our AI KG character. We have to go to the character movement. And because we're using the Manny as our source animation blueprint, we need to make sure that the acceleration, use acceleration for paths is true. Otherwise we won't get the animation. And then we can go to our, our event begin play and just do an AI move to. So what we'll do is we'll just tell the pawn, which will be self, to maybe chase us. So we can say get player character. And then we can just do that. And maybe we'll just make him a little bit slower. Walk speed 400. Compile. Save. So let's go back to the editor and play. And as you can see, our character is running and chasing us with all the animations we would expect. So that's an AI character out of a metahuman. To turn him into a player character is now a simple process. So we go to our BP AI KG and just duplicate him. A BP player kg and then we can open him up we'll disconnect the begin play ai move to as we don't need it but we'll go to the class settings and we'll just change this to our third person character compile save we can now go back to our main level go to the world settings and change our default pawn class to player KG. Now when we play, we've got our AI character chasing us. We can jump with our animations and we should have foot IK working as well. So that seems to be working as we'd expect. You might have noticed some issues with the hair. So sometimes if I come down here and look across, you notice that the hair is kind of sticking out. 
And this is often an issue with, with metahumans, particularly when it comes to the hair. One fix for that can be to turn off physics because that can be a contributory factor. So if we go to our BP player, and if we go to the face and we click on the hair again and go to its groom asset and open that, one of the tabs is for physics. And where it says enable simulation, if you turn that off, that can solve some issues. So if we play again, and sort of go stand here where there are some sort of physics issues, now that hair problem has gone away. And even when we're jumping, we're not getting any sort of artifact issues that you might have noticed beforehand. And everything else is working just fine. There are lots of settings in these groom assets, so it's worth exploring them as you've got a lot of control that you can change. It's also worth remembering that a lot of these assets here are interchangeable. So if you've downloaded more than one MetaHuman, you could, for instance, change this man's hair. So you go to his groom asset and check to see if there's any other hair available. So there's a hair S coil, and then you need to give it a binding asset, which will correspond to the name. And now this chap has a different head of hair. And again, when you change the groom asset, if you're getting issues, obviously go and turn off that RBF interpolation like we did at the start. You can also change their clothing. So this is the torso as a material. We can see what else is available there. Is an M top shirt. So I can change his appearance and I could do the same for his trousers. And again, we have a different looking character when we play compared to the other AI character, which is the same blueprint. Because our meta human is using the mesh from Quinn as its parent mesh in the animation blueprint, Any animation that's been retargeted to that mesh should be able to be played as a montage on your MetaHuman as well. There is a lot to explore with MetaHumans. I hope this shows you how easy it is to create your own AI character or player character using a MetaHuman and how to fix common problems that you might encounter.